Ace Press says, I didn't like how Debo was taking runs at the end of the game. I, I the Kyle Shanahan was asked, um, should you have taken the starters out at any point? And he basically said no, because the last time we played this team, we were down 14 and they won. I I, I mean, it's kind of a, I don't know. I, did, I don't really agree with that answer. Every game is different, but I, I see where he's coming from. Um, did you agree with that, Anthony? Would you have taken out any starters at any point? Man, you know, when after Kyle said that, I was like, well, shit, he's right. <laughs> you know, I mean, we did this blue lead two seasons ago against Atlanta. And I mean, we've seen the blown leads happen all throughout the season. But at the same time, it kind of maybe this is a little too conspiracy, -y, I guess, but the, I feel like that kind of falls on coaching confidence. I mean, if you're a coach, you got to be confident that you can put your backups out there and still be able to execute. And I know they're backups for a reason. And I know with backups, you do have to temper the expectations quite a bit, but still you, you got a three score lead. You got about five to four minutes left. You have a huge turnaround against Tennessee next week or this week. I'm sorry. They play Thursday in Tennessee who is going to be pissed off because they just lost to 40 year old Ben Roethlisberger, you know, and they're going to be playing pissed and you got to keep these guys healthy. So seeing Warner, seeing Bosa out there, then, I mean, even with like a minute left, it's like, Come on. You know, I, I really am not a fan of that. And I don't want to go on and on saying that, you know, being too negative about it. But it is frustrating because we know the Niners is injury luck throughout the year, throughout the entire Shanahan tenure. God forbid Nick Bosa goes out there for a crappy 10 second play left when the, you're up three scores and he tears an ACL or something, you know, and that's already happened once. <laughs> so it's like it's just seeing that it, it is very frustrating. But I digress, man. It's Shanahan does have a point, And if that's what he really believes in then you kind of just have to roll with it. Yeah, so I mean, I would have liked to have seen them. I think the main thing was, like you said, um, they do turn around and play in four days. I mean, they have a Thursday night game against a really tough team in the Tennessee Titans who were kind of competing for first place in the AFC South. So I know they, got the, they, they took an L today, but they're still a very tough team, and I wouldn't have minded him taking out some starters at all. I thought we were going to see – Trey Lance at some point today because just how wide of a gap they were. But it seemed like the way Matt Ryan was competing, completing passes deep down the field, it could get really quickly to a one to two score game. So I think that's maybe why Kyle Shanahan was a little hesitant. So it's like, I see both sides. I just didn't like the fact that he used a 2019 matchup. I believe they didn't play last year, right? They, they didn't play last year. So, no, they didn't have a matchup so yeah, last year. 2019 matchup yeah. to, as his reason why, um, but yeah, this comment from Ace Red Debo taking chains and knocking out mouthpieces. Tell me you saw that run down to the goal line. Yeah, knock yeah, that yeah. guy's mouthpiece out, <laughs> dude. When I saw the hit and the mouthpiece flying, I was like, so because on the broadcast they were like, oh, it's a face mask, and I was like, no, 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 that looked like a mouth guard. <laughs> and AJ Terrell, I think, was just laying there like, <laughs> you know, he's on the ground, like, I'm like holy shit. Yep. Debo is just, you know, he takes chains. He takes mouthpieces. He takes lives. The dude just, he's been insane. And a lot of people are talking Jonathan Taylor and Cooper Cup being the, you know, offense player of the year. I'm sorry, man. Debo Samuel said in NFL records, you know, wide receiver rushing touchdowns, franchise records as well. It's, I'm trying to take my homerism aside because Debo Samuel has single-handedly been a huge piece to the offense. And without him, it really makes you wonder where the offense could be. And offensive player of the year should go to someone who is the most valuable and I think without Cup and without Taylor, Colts and the Rams will still be good. Without Devo, though, <laughs> nah, man, I think the offense is terrible. So taking mouthpieces and man and winning awards because Devo is just a monster, an absolute yeah. monster. Yeah, I, I totally agree. What he's done for the 49ers offense has been nothing short of remarkable. Perry, next thing, or real quick before I move on, this comment from Devo, he was asked in the presser right now about his physical play and knocking out. Uh, the Falcons DB's mouthpiece. And he says, not too many defensive backs want a part of that. I totally agree. It, there's, I, they're like shying away from contact and, and he's totally embracing it. You don't see this that often out of a wide receiver. And I really just think that speaks to kind of the style of this San Francisco 49ers team, the way they play, they're gritty. They fight for extra yards. I, George Kittle fights. He, he tried to take on six men today. That's something I've never seen a player do. I mean, he caught the ball, turned around, and there were six defenders there, and he still was kind of trying to fight them. So this Diners team, they got heart and they got grit, and I think that's that will take them as far as they can go. Um, you so know, I really do respect it. 
it, it's crazy because, like you said, with Bosa and Kittle and how they run, I mean, Ayuk is physical. Jennings is physical. Jeff Wilson is physical. Kyle Juszczyk had a nasty cut in this, on his six-yard rushing touchdown. It was a filthy cut to get in. And the way I look at it is they may not compare to the guy, but they all run like a bunch of Derrick Henrys. It, it's pretty remarkable, I think. I mean, they might not be throwing stiff arms, but they are just hard to tackle. Kittle is just fighting for yards on every single play. And it's football. It's a tiring sport. And then on top of that, you're getting ran on for 100 yards a game. You're down three scores or two scores at the time. It's like, you know, it's demoralizing. Why do you want to go out and tackle if you just know you're going to get your ass kicked? And I mean, Matt Ryan wasn't looking good. The defense wasn't looking good. Everything on the Atlanta Falcons was just low morale. And then that just makes physicality that much more demoralizing towards Atlanta. So when you have those guys playing like that, when you have Devo just knocking mouth guards out, you don't want to tackle them. And those are the type of things that make you concerned if you're another playoff team going, fuck, excuse my language, I really don't want to play the Niners. I mean, yeah, you got Garoppolo to worry about, but physicality is huge. It really is. And if you're afraid to tackle or if you don't, if you want to make a career decision, sometimes that could be the difference between the game. Ace bro, thanks for the love. Yeah, appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Ian brought up a very good point. Ian Sharp, he said, those late hits on Kittle are dangerous. And that's a good point as well. You know, when you're fighting for the extra yards, you're already kind of basically the play's over, but the whistle hasn't been blown. That's when those late hits kind of come in. You can get a helmet to helmet collision. That might not be called. Look at Elijah Mitchell. I mean, he, he's been out two weeks with a concussion. I know and the knee, but part of that is concussion. He took a helmet to helmet hit, wasn't called. Um, they can be dangerous. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. You can fight for the extra yards, but you got to know you could also take a late hit. So you got to take it all.